We're walking today to Shangalenin, and which is a church based on a sixth century saint. And we thought it would be a good opportunity to talk a little bit about Celtic Christianity, and early Christianity in, in Britain and Wales. It's a glorious morning. A glorious morning. We got up early. Didn't quite make the sunrise, but it's wonderful to be alone out here. And this is a pilgrim trail. Um, now the North Pilgrim Way. Yep. And uh, there's a number of churches along it. One of which is Shine Lennon. And you know, one of the things that I find interesting about Christianity in the early Middle Ages is that it isn't necessarily what people expect. What do you mean by that? Well, so to give a bit, bit quick, quick rundown history, um, the Romans brought Christianity to Britain. There was no England at the time, no Wales at the time, to Britain um, after the death of Jesus. And the first Christians were in Britain. Many of them were British, which is the people who became the Welsh, but were called Britons at the time. The first martyr was St. Albans, who was a British guy who died for his beliefs in the second century, which is pretty early. Yeah. And I think, um, and so then after the Romans left and the Saxons invaded, and the British were pushed west into Wales and became Welsh. Um, I think that within popular culture, it's not really understood that they were, many of them, Christian. There was obviously pagan elements still remaining, but um, oh, we gotta go over style. Well, that's the whole Arthurian thing, right? Right, so King Arthur held off the Saxons for a generation, but a big component of that was that the Saxons were pagan. Um, and if you Google, which I did, you know, when did Christianity come to Britain? Sometimes it defaults to England and you get something like 597 AD with St. Augustine. But that's when Christianity came to England. Um, the Welsh the British had been Christian for 400 years by then, many of them. So, um, you're talking about that's the Saxon. That's right. The Saxon conversion to Christianity began in 597. Um, in a sense, a reintroduction into England. Um, St. Albans is located outside of London. So, yeah. you know, Christianity existed there. But because of the Saxon takeover, um, you know, all the Christians, as they were British slash Welsh, were pushed into Wales. And so what you get in Wales, which we see evidence of now with churches like Shangalanen or Shangrakwin or Shanvaglin, is um, an isolated form of Christianity, which we sort of call Celtic Christianity now. Um, where you didn't have a central authority, you didn't have, uh, I mean, there were rules, but they tended to be based around a saint, like Galenin or Ruckwin or Baglin or Gwen um, You know, you would have a holy person, a perceived holy person who would uh, often become a hermit, have some kind of transformative story, and then establish a little hermitage, which as followers, as people found out about this holy person, um, became a church. And so Shangalenin uh, was begun under that very similar pattern where Kalenin, actually was his name, um, set up a church in 
this spot, which we're, we're not there yet. We're some miles from now, but we're walking to today. Look at the uh, frost. Yeah, it's cold today. Yeah. Um, and people just flock to it. Um, it w sometimes people ask me when I talk about the early Christian church or the Celtic church, were they Catholic? And it's like, well, Catholic isn't really the right word. Uh, is the current Catholic church in a sense a descendant of the church that existed in the Middle Ages? Yes. Well, but is it or is it something that was parallel to it and then they eventually kind of remerged? Oh, I see what you're saying. Well, um, the thinking at the time was that there was one church. Yes. Right. One church, the Holy Catholic Church with a lowercase c. Um, and all of these, uh, well, I mean, because the truth is that every part of Christendom, whether we're talking about Wales or Ireland or Gaul or Constantinople or Russia, uh -huh. had its own unique stamp on Christianity. Um, the Pope in Rome, um, was the seat of authority, and it a lot depend. Some of it, the distance, made it nominal. So out here in Wales, you know, uh, the influence was relatively minimal. And so, so for example, people would make a pilgrimage to Rome. One of the early Christian thinkers, early Welsh Christian thinkers, British at the time, was Pelagius for example, who was declared a heretic uh, because for his beliefs. But he was born in Britain and went to Rome. I mean, Rome was still the seat of the Christian church. The people here saw it as the seat of the Christian church. It's just that they did things a little differently. One of the things that happened as time went on was as the... Rome, and its people in Rome, um, sought more central authority. Um, they worked to try to influence or sway or change the structure of the Celtic Church. And I've talked in the past about one of the important items was the fact that illegitimate children could inherit by, if their father acknowledged them, by you know, the time of Schwellen ab Griffith or Schwellen you know, this was an anathema to the official church in Rome, but um, persisted in Wales with the support of basically the whole populace and a lot of the, the clergy. Yeah. So how do you want to wrap this up? Um... Um, I just kind of want to say that when we visit all these little churches, all these little sites dedicated to saints, that, um, you know, these saints were real people, and, but this Christian church was not um, a centralized um, Control, sort of con central controlling system. In fact, for a lot of the time, it was in disarray, especially in these early years, because the center of the Christian church wasn't Rome, but Constantinople. Um, there was a lot of chaos. And within that, Celtic Christianity evolved and quite frankly thrived to the point that they began sending out missionaries themselves um, to all parts of the world, including Ireland, including England, um, including Scotland. And uh, it's actually really quite amazing to walk in the footsteps of those early Christians 1,500 years ago.
Thanks for watching my video. You can click on the playlist or subscribe to my channel to see more. There'll be a new video next week. If you want to check out my books, click on the link to my webpage.